Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the 28th of the sixth month on our Creator's calendar, as we reckon it, which is also the 10th of September on the Gregorian calendar for 2022. And we are continuing this Shabbat on our reading of Gad the Seer, which we are on chapter eight. So we'll go ahead and get started. It says, and Yahuwah appeared unto Dawid in the time of his old age and said to him, Behold, I am with you, and I am your Elohim. And behold, my covenant is with you. Fear not, neither be dismayed, for your El is your helper. And Dawid bowed down to Yahuwah and rejoiced in his heart. And Yahuwah said, These are the words you will speak to the ears of the people in my name, so they will obey and they will live, for there will be no more anger on them. And Yahuwah put his words in his mouth. Then Dawid assembled all Yisrael in Yerushalayim. And he made to himself a pulpit of wood, and he stood upon it before all the people. So you have the beloved suspended on wood above the people in, their, in the sight of all, if you can see the picture there, okay? And he opened his mouth and said, Hearken, Yisrael, your Elohim and my Elohim is one. The only one, this is speaking of the Father, because the Son is the only, the firstborn of creation, but the Father is the only true Elohim, right? He is the only one and unique. There is no one like his individuality. Hidden from all, he was and is and will be. He fills his place, but his place doesn't fill him. The shepherd of Hermas has it this way. He says, he comprehends all things and is comprehended by nothing. Or the other one is that he encompasses all things and himself is comprehended or encompassed by none. The apostolic constitution says that he's within finite things, but not himself contained by anything or constrained by anything. It says, he sees but is not seen. He tells and knows futures, for he is El without end, and there is no end to his end. Omnipotent, El of truth, whole worlds are full of his esteem. And this would be this world and the world to come. And he gave each one free choice. If one wants to do good, he will be helped. And if one wants to do evil, a path will be opened for him. For that we will worship our Elohim, our King, our Master, our Deliverer, with love and awe. For your chokmah is the fear of Yahuwah, and your cleverness is to depart from evil. <laughs> Remember and obey the Torah of Moshe, man of Elohim, that it may be well with you all the days. Ask your fathers, and they will declare unto you, your elders, and they will tell you. Be strong and vigilant to obey the Torah, and not to hear it only. For a deed is like a root, hearing it is like a seed. A belief is like a tree, and the fruit is like righteousness. And what shall we do to a smelly and stinky seed if a root will not come out of it? For that, hurry up, be quick, and act. Hear and act. And this is exactly what it says in the Shepherd of Hermas that those who hear these things, especially when it talks about the corrections for the believers that are in the parables within the shepherd of Hermas, those who hear them acknowledge in their 
being that that applies to them and repent of it quickly will also be forgiven quickly. But if you're slow to act, then he's slow to forgive because we reap that which we sow. There is no we, measure for measure. It's how he is. He's the truth and he's trustworthy even if we're not. So for that, hurry up, be quick and act. Hear and act for you are a true seed. For you have belief and righteousness and Yahuwah will barak you in all shalom. Talk shalom each one with another. And love the deed and those created in the image of Yahuwah, like your own inner beings or souls. So love the work and those created in his image, meaning men. For if you love the creation, it is a sign that you love the creator. And also you should take hold of the one, yea, also from the other withdraw not your hand. Love Yahuwah and also man, that it shall be well with you all the days. And Dawid raised up his voice, and his hands spread forth toward Shemaim, and said, Yahuwah Elohim, the El of the Ruachoth of all flesh, Elohim merciful and favorable, guard Yisrael forever. Deliver your people and Barak your inheritance, and tend them and carry them forever. And all the people called out, Amen, Amen. And Dawid sent the people away, and they went home in Shalom. <clears throat> now this, the end of Dawid's reign and the beginning of Shalomos was roughly around 1000 BC as we reckon. And it literally, the I believe when we were looking at the math before, I will have to double check, but the founding of the Hekel when they laid the foundation and the birth of our Mashiach was exactly a thousand years apart or a day away from each other. <clears throat> so chapter nine, this is in Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers unto Dawid, saying, I know that Yahuwah, your Elohim, is the El, and now deal kindly and truly with me, and teach me the Torah of your El, for I will worship him all my life. And this is important, because right here, Hiram is the king of Tyre, meaning he's of the line of Yahuda, but these were wayward Hebrews. Tyre was part of Phoenicia, that if you recall, it, it was Charles Totten who was in the, the American military, and he wrote books about the uh, lost tribes. He was a prolific author in the late, in the mid and late 1800s. He mentions that Mehol was known as Phoenicia Farsa by the Egyptians. He was the founder of Phoenicia, and he gave it to He-Man, one of his sons. Others had founded other places in Greece, Spain, Ireland, as they traveled around. And these were the sons of Zerah or the Son that were being leaders or rulers over different areas of the world, as foretold in the book of Yobelim, where it was specifically given to Jacob. And it says everywhere the, the soles of the sons of men's feet tread he would have some of his descendants reigning. And that was specifically given to Yahuda and later to Dawid over the children. So in antiquity, you can see these things actually playing out. That's my whole point. <clears throat> but Hiram would have been a descendant of Yahuda from Zerah as well. And he was asking to be taught the Torah, although they were not given that covenant at Mount Sinai, they did not commit the golden calf incident. And they were not required to keep those added bonds. As you'll see here, it was given only for those children that he corrected in the wilderness to have that covenant until he came. And a second witness to this fact is in the ancient history of Caledonia, 
they kept what they called the laws of the altar, which was the book of Hanok, the testaments of the 12 patriarchs and the writings of Abraham, Noah, and, and the others they would have carried out of Mitzrayim with them, who the sons of Louis, who were the Mechlorans eventually, would have kept and taught the people. They kept the laws of the altar all the way through until the coming of our Mashiach. And it wasn't until after he came that they were given the good news and the Ten Commandments or the covenant from, the, from creation. But the added bonds were no longer required. And it was never required of them because they didn't directly commit that trespass. In the same way here, Hiram's given the same instruction for what was required of them at that time. <clears throat> but this is why they were able to partake in helping with the building of the Hekel. If you recall, when the Yahudim came back from the Babylonian captivity and the Samaritans who were not related, who came from Babylon and five cities from there when the children were taken into captivity, the Assyrians had replaced them, if you recall. Those people contrived to try to help build the Hekel in the city walls but were refused because it wasn't given for them to do just something to keep in mind it says and the messengers came to Dawid with an offering in their hands for Yahuwah and for Dawid and they told him the words of Hiram and presented him with an offering and Dawid said in reply to Hiram go and say to my brother to Hiram Thus said Dawid, your brother, be afraid of Yahuwah, creator of Shemaim and fire, the sea and the earth, the wet, the dry, the heat, and the cold, the mineral, the vegetation, the living, and the speaking, the spheres, the Pallades, or the seven, right, and Orion. These are the modern names, but this isn't what he would have called them. Orion is called Orion right here. It's the light bearer in antiquity. It was known or attributed to Nimrod by Babylonian error. But in the book of Revelation, this is the one standing with the, with the little book or the Bibli Biblionary in his hand in the sky and that represented the coming of Wycliffe in the English translation into English at that time in 1390 I believe which was also the culmination of the second woe the first woe's culmination was in the creation and destruction of the Byzantine Empire which was the diminishing diminishing of his image the second woe was the loss of his refuge where his name was removed and that was in this translation if you recall and then the third woe began during the bloodiest battle of the Civil War, where his lot and refuge was given up to his spoilers until evening, if you recall. And that was at the usurpation of the Constitutional Republic, which was the children in dispersion making a covenant with their maker, as foretold before, of the woman riding on eagles' wings into the wilderness for a time. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, sorry about that. So anyways, what we see here and what was actually written aren't always the same thing. I don't know what all of these were originally, like the Pleiades, I know the seven. The spheres represent the, the luminaries or the wandering stars, okay? The sun and moon is obvious. And it says the substantial and the spiritual or ruachni, meaning the sensible and the insensible the wandering stars, the senses, and everything. All these were created and made without a blemish by El Shaddai. His name is Yahuwah. And if you do this, observing the commandments that were ordered to the children of Noah, your father, then good will be yours all your days. For we are his allies. We are different from you by the Torah of truth, sealed by the seal of Shaddai, called children of El of truth. And therefore we have to obey the whole Torah, for we were commanded by name 
saying, Speak unto the children of Yisrael. <clears throat> and he has not dealt so with any nation, as he did with us. For us he chose, and not for any reason, but for the great love he loves us. And it, Shaul, Paul, mentions that the gifts of Elohim are not to be repented of. Some people will believe that the literal 12 tribes don't have any significance today, but that's nowhere in scripture. It says, you of all the people, or you of all the nations have I known, therefore I, I punish you for your inequity. It's because specifically the 12 tribes were known and called by him and given the truth that he's corrected them throughout history. And that's why you have history the way it is and why we have suffering the way we do and why we have exaltation or prosperity when we're obedient. But it's always been true and you can track that out throughout history as well. Now, the thing to keep in mind is after he came, it was open to everyone. And it's not just the physical seed that is the true Yisrael, but those who are obedient. All right, and that's why it's always the, the picture was the Luiim were the ones that repented within the land. And those in Shimon, those who hear, believe, and do, did not have an inheritance of their own, but they were spread throughout. That was a picture of like believers throughout the world. It, it's a type and shadow. <clears throat> it says, And the messengers returned and came back to Hiram their king and told him the words of King Dawid. And Hiram rejoiced in his heart and gathered all his princes and his servants and said to them the following, listen to me, Tyrans and Sidonians, what I will tell you. Be afraid and fear El Shaddai, whose name is Elohim of Yisrael. He made everything by speaking and by the breath of his mouth or the Ruach of his mouth, and who will tell him what to do, for he is one. Say with me, Baruch, or blessed is Yahuwah, Elohim of Yisrael, who chooses his people, and Baruch is Dawid his servant, king of his people, and Baruch is Yisrael, whom Yahuwah has chosen to be his inheritance. And would that we were slaves to the children of Yisrael that are called children of Yahuwah, their Elohim. And all his princes and his servants said, Amen, thus will be done. And Hiram, or Hiram lifted up his voice and said, I have seen, and this is much like Bilam, and again, not because of any special specialty of his self or his being but because of the position he's in as the king of this people he's able to foretell just like george washington in the farewell address foretold the calamities and problems we would face with divide and conquer politics and some other issues that came up if you ever read that you'll see it and it's the same reason why kaiapha because of being in the position of high kohen even though it was not lawful for him he was given to foretell. <clears throat> he says, I have seen, but not now. I have beheld, but not nigh. There shall step forth a sun from Dawid, and a moon shall rise out of the house of Yahuda, and shall smite all the children of Ham, and break down all the children of Yepheth. And he will possess all the kingdoms of the world. And who is like Yahuwah, El above all mighty ones? Now, the sun, like the light of the sun from Dawid, which is our Mashiach, and the moon, the kingdom, arose out of the house of Yahuda, the lawgiver, right? And shall smite all the children of Ham, which it was foreshadowed in the children being there first, and then the calamities in the Exodus. And then breaking down all the children of Yepheth is where the children went. The vast body of the children went into Europe, into the belly of the beast there, because they would not keep their duty, just like the foretelling of Yonah and 
when they're delivered from there, there's going to be persecution and the fall of most of Europe, if you remember, it was in chapter two of the book of Gad the Seer. It named them by name, Germany, France, Spain, all these areas that are inhabited by the wayward children, predominantly keeping Catholicism or some form of Christmas and Easter and the other abominations that are paganized and usurping the true belief. This is, and he will possess all the kingdoms of the world and who is like Yahuwah, El above almighty ones, right? And this is foretold in Daniel as well as the mountain or the rock that smashes the feet of the statue, right? And grows into a mountain that will not yield its sovereignty to another, which is explained in the apostolic constitutions as our Mashiach breaking up all the, the pagan kingdoms and the polytheism of their false mighty ones. And who is like Yisrael above all the nations? May our end be like theirs. And when Yahuwah heard the words of Hiram, it was well pleasing in his sight. And Yahuwah said unto Gad the seer of Dawid as follows, Unto my servant, or go unto my servant rather, and tell him my word that I say unto you. And Gad, the man in whose hand was the word of Yahuwah, came to Dawid and said, Thus said Yahuwah, the Elohim of hosts, I have heard the words of Hiram, king of Tyre, and the words of his princes and his servants, and they pleased me. Wherefore, I shall give him and his people a heart of hokma or wisdom, and comprehension, to prepare my house where I put my name, and that will assist his land's growth. For I have chosen them and shall not despise them. And Dawid said to Gad, Now I know that Yahuwah our Elohim gives good reward to all his creatures and to all the works he has created, for he is a El of mercy who dwells on high and looks after the low or looks after in low, and he that is banished will not be an outcast from him. Baruch be Yahuwah forevermore. Now see, he, and he that is banished will not be an outcast from him, speaking that those that are outside the covenant, right? For as the Shemaim is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him and towards his works. Baruch Yahuwah, all you his works, in all his places of his dominion. Barak Yahuwah Nefeshi, or my soul. Hallelujah. And the next two are going to be similar to Psalms that we have in Scripture, but slightly different. So I'll just read through them since they should be mostly familiar. All right. This is at that time, Dawid said this praise, saying, I will exalt you, my Elohim, O King, and I will barak your name forever and ever. Every day I will barak you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is Yahuwah, and just so you know, this follows the Aleph Bet, so Aleph Bet, Gimel, that's why I said great first. But Dalit is door, door la door is generation after generation. Right, so Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Wa, Zion, and it goes on throughout the Aleph, Bet. Every psalm that's like this, Psalm 145, Psalm 25, Psalm 35, the apostrophe of Zion, as it's called, Psalm 119, every single one of these, you can take the, the letter that's represented and that's spoken of and go back to what creation account that represents, what was being done in creation at that time, and you'll find that this is directly alluding to that and applicable. Every single one of them without fail follow that pattern when it's lined up with the Aleph bed, which is rather amazing. And again, not something that any man can make up. This is great as Yahuwah and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. 
generation after generation shall praise your works and shall declare your mighty acts. The esteemed splendor of your majesty and your wondrous works I will rehearse. And men shall speak of the power of your tremendous acts, and I will recount your greatness. They shall utter the fame of the abundance of your goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. Yahuwah is favorable and full of compassion, long-suffering and abundant in mercy. Yahuwah is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Let all your works, Yahuwah, praise you, and let your set-apart ones barak you. They shall speak of the esteem of your kingdom and talk of your might. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the splendorous majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages and your dominion endures through all generations. All your enemies fell down, Yahuwah, and all of their might was swallowed up. Yahuwah lifts up all those who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hands and fill every living thing with favor. Yahuwah is righteous in all his ways, and favorable in all his works. Yahuwah is near to all that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will perform the desire of them that fear him, and he will hear their supplication and deliver them. Yahuwah preserves all that love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of Yahuwah, and let all flesh barak his Kodesh name forever and ever. All right, and chapter 11 is similar to Psalm 144. It says, These are the prayers of Dawid, praising Yahuwah on the day when Elchanan, the son of Yair, slew Lam, or Lach, Lami, the brother of Goliath the Gitti, and Yahu Nathan, the son of Shimei, a man of great stature. And both of these men are mentioned as slain mighty men or giants in the Chronicles, I believe. They were some of the mighty men of Dawid that went around with him. And they were saying, Baruch be Yahuwah, my rock, who instructs my hands for war, my fingers for battle. My loving kindness and my refuge, my high tower and my deliverer, my protector, and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. Yahuwah, what is man that you take knowledge of him? And this would be the word Enosh, or what we get for mortal man. Or the son of Adam, that you make account of him. Man is like unto a breath, his days are as a shadow that passes away. Yahuwah, bow your Shemaim and come down. Touch the mountains that they shall smoke. Send lightning and you shall scatter them. Send forth your arrows and you shall discomfort them. Send forth your hand from on high. Rescue me and deliver me out of many waters out of the hand of strangers, whose mouth speaks falsehood, and whose right hand is a right hand of lying. Elohim, I will sing a new song to you. I will sing praises to you on the psalmstry, or lyre, of ten strings, who gives deliverance to kings, who rescues your servant beloved from an evil sword. Rescue me, and deliver me from the hand of strangers, whose mouth speaks falsehood, and whose right hand is a right hand of lying. 
For our children are as plants grown up in their youth. Our daughters are corner pillars carved after the fashion of a temple. Our garners are full affording food, all manner of store. Our sheep increase by thousands or alfim and ten thousands in our markets. Our oxen are well laden, no breach, no going forth, no outcry in our ways. Happy is the people that is such or that is in such a case. Happy is the people whose Elohim is Yahuwah. Happy is he who waits when there will be good to all Yisrael forever. And speaking of the, the buddings of the millennial reign and for the forever after, right? So chapter 12. <clears throat> Says these things, sorry, these are the words of Dawid before his death as he spoke unto Yahuwah and Yisrael, sorry, yeah, unto Yahuwah and Yisrael. I thought that said Yahuda at first and I misspoke. I apologize. <clears throat> and he spoke, saying, El, the Baruch, the Great, the Only One. Guileless, meaning without deceit. Righteous, dreadful, meaning awe-inspiring. Benefactor of the miserable, darling, the senior, Shaddai. Kadosh, have mercy upon the vine, your good inheritance. He will answer us in the day that we call. My master, hear my prayer and my supplication, for you hear prayers of all mouths. Hear and accept the cry of your people, for they are your flock and inheritance. Send your light and truth to their help. Give them one heart to worship you, one shoulder as one man, meaning many members but one body, right? And they will be one in your hand. And do not lose any of them, for your name is to be one. For our fathers and mothers are one. For that Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah is our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. Turn you not unto idols, for they are vain and utterly pass away. Only unto Elohim shall you cleave, for him be your dread and fortress, to defeat your enemies, enemies of spirit and enemies of flesh beneath your feet, to bring you to Yerushalayim that is concealed for your future, the Shamayim Yerushalayim, the mother of us all, right? And just so you know, he was anointed just like the foretellers, just like the Kohanim, and they were endowed with intelligence or comprehension of the truth. They were given our Mashiach, and they knew him. They knew what would happen, and they gave this to the people in snippets here and there. But you can find these things throughout these writings and throughout the common scriptures. Although it's not plainly stated, they plainly knew the truth, including who our Mashiach was. And it says, and there shall you see him face to face in the presence of a living L that is seen face to face. And you are one people. If you grow in belief, you will be filled with gates of intelligence, meaning the doing of his word brings comprehension, just like it mentions elsewhere. Baruch is the eye that has seen all these things. Yet if you lack in belief, you will reach gates of impurity. For that, cleanse and purify yourself before Yahuwah, your king, that it shall be well with you all the days. And Dawid died on the day of the Shabbat, after midday, in the fortieth year of his reign over Yahuda and Yisrael. And 
Our Mashiach was risen early dawn before the Shabbat. Dawid died on it as a mirror or opposite of that, which you see another thing reflected throughout scripture. And it is mentioned in the odes, I believe, Yahuwah is our mirror. Look, in, look at your face and see him in, in them. And behold the countenance of your face. I'll have to share that one again. It's pretty neat. But the point is, there's things that are reflected that they're opposites to. And a perfect example was with Yahusuf. He was righteous before our maker and exalted to the right hand of Pharaoh and doing the things in, in a position of being pleasing to Yahuwah. But his children, predominantly, are not walking correctly. We're doing that very thing in a larger scale and foretelling, but opposite that. So it, it wasn't necessarily with a good cause. There's other instances of that kind of parallel you can see throughout. His dying on the Shabbat and our Mashiach raising on the Shabbat is a fitting thing. Or early dawn Shabbat, though. That's the, the parallel there. And it says, he was 70 years of age when he died. And he was buried in great honor in the city of Dawid. And the rest of the deeds of Dawid the king with all his reign and might, and the times that passed over him, and over Yisrael, and over all the kingdoms of the countries. Behold, they are written in the words of Shemuel the seer, and in the words of Nathan the foreteller. And they also have Ido the foreteller, and you had Gad right here. A lot of what's alluded to, like the countries that were ruled over, uh, Dawid dominated Assyria and took over that area. At the greatest part of their reign was from river to river and from what they call Turkey to the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds, right? The Arabian Peninsula, if you will. And then from Mitzrayim to the, or the uh, Nile River to the Euphrates. They literally had dominion over all that just as his kingdom, which passed to Shal uh, to Shalomo, rather, but they also had all the other countries, as you're about to find out, submitting to them. And that isn't made plain overtly, but that's what you see when the Phoenicians were a worldwide trading empire. It was the Hebrews mixed with them, and these kingdoms paid respect to them, as you read. But chapter 13, it says, And Shalomo was strengthened in his kingdom and yahuwah his elohim was with him and magnified him exceedingly and after that tamar daughter of dawid sister of Absalom, went out and fled to the house of king gesher and spent a year and eight months in the house of the king in the house of her mother the king of Geshur's daughter married Dawid and her had Absalom and Tamar as children. That's when she was the one that was defiled by her brother. And then her brother was killed by Absalom when he found out her half brother had defiled her. But then she fled right here. It says, And King Shalomo knew nothing of her going. For she went secretly, and unto the king and to the people she concealed her going. And King Shalomo said, Whoever finds Tamar, my sister of my father, and brings her to me, I shall pay his wages, change his raiment, and fifty shekels of gold. And for those that don't know, Tamar in Hebrew is the date or the palm tree, the date tree specifically, or the date for the fruit. And Tamaris, or Tamoris, if you will, was the queen of the Goths, or the Masagati, that fought against and beat the Persians that, that were trying to take over their land. It says, And the king's servants sought her in all the land of Israel, but they could not find her. And she was hiding at the house of her mother in Geshur, at the house of her mother's father. And there was the king's friend whose name was Pirshaz, 
and he loved the maiden very much, for she was of beautiful form and fair to look upon. In those days, the king of Gesher went to see King Shalomo, as all the kings of the land. And King Shalomo, sorry, King Shalomo asked him, saying, Is it well with you? And he said, It is well. And he said, Is it well with the wife of my father Dawid in your house? And he said, It is well. And King Shalomo continued asking, Is it well with Tamar, my sister? He asked this cleverly. And he said, I have no knowledge, for I have not ever seen her. He had lied to him. And here's another proof that if you're walking in righteousness and pleasing to your maker, you don't have to worry about what others may do, what they may say. You don't have to worry about their intentions. Or you can trust Yahuwah completely that everything will work to your benefit. And anyone that's trying to contrive to you will be discovered because you discover the, the root of all error for others. And you reap what you sow. That's the very principle that Dawid elucidates or makes known in his life in the common scriptures. And it's what Shaul talks about when he says that he knows that he'll be delivered from all these things because of what he's doing. Where he was pleased to bring the good news of deliverance both to the wise and the foolish. Right? Right here it says, and it came to pass when the king of Gesher was in Yarushalayim, his friend Pirshaz came to Tamar's room saying to her, lie with me. But Tamar refused to listen to him and said, let's not my master, let's not do this wanton deed, for I am a king's daughter. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, for his love was burning inside him, or his lust, if you will. And Tamar said in her cleverness, for she saw her strength was gone, Listen to me, my master, to the words of your maid servant. Behold, I know how to play the harp, or it should say lyre. And you now... Lie down on my knees to hear my song. And after the song of my heart, then I shall do your heart's desire. And Pirshaz listened to Tamar, and he lay in her bosom. And Tamar took the lyre to play it pleasantly. And you can know it's a lyre and not a harp, because the harp is a large instrument that would be seated. And the lyre is something she can hold in her hands while he's in her bosom, if you will. But it, she took the lyre or harp to play it pleasantly and said in her heart, Yahuwah, king of my father Dawid, your servant, send your light and your truth to hold me and do not allow the desire of a wicked, uncircumcised and impure man. For you have known what is in my heart and do not let the daughter of Dawid, your servant, sin. My father Dawid, my father Dawid, my father Dawid, look at your dishonor and your daughter's dishonor. Go before the throne of esteem of Shaddai and ask for mercy for me, to Elohim of hosts, to help me by his help. For he does not want the evil of base fellows, and these are his deeds for those who have been robbed. Who overcome the strong. I beseech you, Yahuwah, deliver me now. I beseech you, Yahuwah, make me prosper. And she's asking not to be abused by someone who's uncircumcised. She'd never asked this of her own brother because she, he was circumcised for one. And remember, we're not supposed to desire the evil of our brother or retribution, but turn the other cheek. There's patterns in the way things work out in the original writings that you find the explanation for in the renewed covenant. So that's the key there. And the parable, the chain of authority for anyone that wants to hear real quick. Moshe, 
the servant of Elohim was given to tell the children that there would be one coming like unto him in all things, and it's to him we must take heed because the name of the Father is in him. And that was Yahuwah, Yahushua, when he came, who declared as very much, for if you had believed Moshe, you would have believed me, for he spoke of me, right? Um, when he came, he established that anyone who would not listen to his 12 and then the 70 that he anointed and sent out to teach the truth, it would be better for, so for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for those people. So primarily we listen to Yahuwah, Yahushua first, then his emissaries and those that were taught of him. And they establish in the apostolic constitutions who they anointed as overseers of the assemblies and that they were to be listened to in all things in the same way. So then you have the likes of Clement, Ignatius, and those that were specifically named. Polycarp was not, but Yahukanon is. Irenaeus was from him. So you have a chain of evidence from these people all the way back. And those are the ones that should be listened to in the order of authority that's established. And that in that way, you can't be led astray. <clears throat> right here it says, I call on you on the day I am frightened, and may I be answered, and do not lose Kodesh seed by the impurity of the impure, for you are Kadosh or Kodesh set apart, Elohim, and I trust you. So calling on him in the day of distress, and listen to what happens. And Yahuwah heard the voice of Dawid for his daughter, and a sleep from El was fallen upon Pirshaz, and she was playing the harp while he was sleeping in her bosom, or lyre, right, because of the pleasant voice of the lyre. And when Tamar saw that he had fallen asleep, she took the sword girded upon his loins, and took the sword out of its sheath. And she said, Yahuwah of hosts, remember Dawid, my father, and give me power from his power, and your strength will hold me up. Help me as you helped the wife of Heber, the Canaanite, excuse me, to let the sins and sinners cease on the earth. For they know not that you are Yahuwah alone, or that you are he who causes it to be alone. They believe there's other powers and principalities, right? That's inherent in the name. And for anyone that doesn't know, Heber the Canaanite should be with a Q. His wife, Yael, I believe it was, she was the one who had used the tent peg and hammered it through the temple or skull of Sisera after he escaped from Barak during the battles with Barak and Deborah during the time of Judges, roughly around 1200 BC. This is, or the 1250s BC, if I remember correctly, shortly before, but not quite, uh, at the fall of Troy, which was in 1181 BC, roughly. This is, and she took the sword and drove it into the heart of Pirshaz, and Pirshaz fell down on the ground dead. And Tamar saw that Pirshaz was dead, and she said in a loud voice, So perish all your enemies and the enemies of your people, Yahuwah. And now I have seen that you have heard my father's voice. You have plotted and did not let his daughter be dishonored by a base fellow. Baruch are you from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen. So call on me in the day of distress. Let me rescue you and you esteem me. And that is the proper remedy for any issue that we might be having. If we do that, he will accomplish his will, just like he said. <clears throat> 
And at the time of the midday meal, the servants of Pirshaz came to call the master to the king's table. And they came to the inner room, to Tamar, and found her standing with a reddish sword over the corpse of Pirshaz, and their master was dead, thrown down. And they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this? And they took Tamar and brought her to the king's ministers. And the king's servants said to Tamar, What have you done? You have killed the king's friend. You should know that you will be considered dishonored by our master, the king. And Tamar said, Should one deal with the king's daughter as with a harlot, his blood shall be upon his head, and I am guiltless and pure in the king's eyes. And they took Tamar and put her in the hands of a minister of the prison. And they wrote books, or sepharim, to their king, which if you remember sepharim, they translated his books in some places, but it's recountings. When Yahuwah takes Abraham out and says, look upon, and this is our Mashiach that brought him out, and he said, look to the stars and number them if you're able to number it, sephir the stars. So recount, same word. But he's, they, they wrote recountings, if you will, or books to their king in Yarushalayim by the hands of the posts that Tamar, the king's daughter, had killed Pirshaz, his friend, and that Tamar was sent to prison until the time when the king returns. And the posts came to Yarushalayim, the king, sorry, and King Shalomo's guards found them. And he asked them, where are you from? And they said, we come from Gesher to bring books to our master, the king. And the guards took them and brought them to King Shalomo. And King Shalomo said, you came here to spy out the land. And now give me your king's letters to see if a sin is on you or not. And King Shalomo took the books and gave them to the sons of Shisha, the king's scribes, to read. And they read them, and it was found written that Tamar had killed Pirshaz, and that she was in prison. And King Shalomo called Akishar, who was head of the house, and Akishar, or Akisar is my brother, the prince, right? who was head of the household and said, put these uncircumcised men in jail and bring the king of Gesher to me. And he did according to what he had been commanded. And the king of Gesher came before King Shalomo and he bowed his head to the earth. And right now I want you to see the, the picture here. This lines up with the letter Lamed the last work on the end of the third day where it is like the garden of Eden in Eden and all where it's teach and learn poke and pull the, the letter Lamed is the, the letter that represented the garden of Eden in the creation parable. And this is where they were obedient. They were taught and learned and they were doing these things and they had dominion. So you see the picture and this is a type and picture of the millennial reign where you have the king of kings, the ruler over rulers, in Shalomo, who is the offspring of the beloved, who's the inheritor of the reign. It's the picture here in parable form and a type and shadow of the millennial reign that would come. But here you have kings being subservient to him. And if you remember during the time of Gideon, when Gideon had the kings of the Midianites and others there, and he had his son and said, go slay him, he would not raise up against him. And he said, the kings there said, you yourself raise up against us and take us yourself or, you know, you have to be of the worthy honor. And it was Gideon who was anointed at the time of judges, who was like the, the authority or equal to a king, which was equated to all the tribesmen. If you remember in the common scriptures during this time, none of the sons of Yisrael were servants. All of them were captains and leaders in the armies, and they didn't do any of the laborious work. It was the 
servants in the land who did such things. They were like the kings. They were all reigning in the land, but he was the king of kings. And a representation of that, you'll see right here when he asks his servants to rise up and kill the king here, which he does. <clears throat> he says, and he did according to what he had been commanded. And the king of Geshur came before King Shalomo, and he bowed his head toward the earth. And King Shalomo said, why have you cheated me lying? While Tamar, my sister, is with you, and you said that you had not seen her all your life. As Yahuwah lives, who has redeemed Dawid, my father, out of all evil, this very day shall you die. And King Shalomo spoke to Ben Yahu. Ben Yahu, or the, the son of Yahuwah, right? the son of Yahuwah, or Yahuwah has known, or he has known Yahuwah, if you will. So the son of Yahuwah is he is Yahuwah has known. Saying to him, go and fall upon the king of Geshur and his posts. And he fell upon them, and they died, for they had lied to King Shalomo. And they buried them in a cave before the fisherman's gate. Therefore, the name of the cave before the fisherman's gate is the cave of the uncircumcised ones unto this day. And Shalomo sent Ben Yahu, the son of Yahu Yada, and 10,000 valiant men of Yahuda with him. And he said to them, Go to Geshur and take Tamar, my father's daughter, with you and destroy the royal palace. But Take heed to yourselves of Tamar's mother and do her no harm, for she was your father or your master's wife, meaning his father Dawid's wife. <clears throat> and they went and did what they had been commanded by King Shalomo, and they brought Tamar before the king. And Tamar fell down on her face to the ground before the king and said, Let my master the king. My brother live forever. And again, my master, the king, is a common or traditional Semitic greeting at that time. And it was for hundreds of years before then. And it is hundreds of years after then. It was what the Assyrian kings were called by their people. And you can see that in the records of the Assyrian tablets, where they have their spies writing reports of the 12 tribes in captivity and other things. And they also, they talk in that, that same way, my master, the sovereign, right? Or my master, the king, right? <clears throat> but anyway, she, she fell down on her face before the king and said, let my master, the king, my brother, live forever. And King Shalomo asked her, why did you run away to Geshur? And she answered and said, for I was sitting desolate in my house, or sorry, in the house of my brother Absalom, due to my brother Amnon. And he was the one that defiled her that was killed by Absalom. And I said, I shall go to my mother's house, so I shall not be dishonored in the eyes of the sons of the king of my father. And King Shalomo asked her, and why did you kill Pirshaz? And she answered, Thus and thus the uncircumcised one did to me, and thus I did to him in revenge, or in response and retaliation, right? The, the same word for revenge there doesn't always have, it's not revenge so much as in consequence of the actions, it's the, it's the response that you give, okay? But we're told vengeance is mine, says Yahuwah, and it was his deliverance that allowed her to do that. That's what we have to keep in mind. Anytime you see something where it might seem where a patriarch or someone who's afforded providence does something contrary to the will of our creator, and that's never corrected, that's probably not something that is fully made known in scripture because that kind of thing doesn't happen. You can see, and especially to people who attribute any validity to the book of Jasher, 
they'll say that Abraham had multiple concubines and wives and different things, or they'll say that there are other stories that are true about the patriarchs that diminish their walking right in the eyes of people that they were nowhere ever corrected for. And they, there's a lot of reasons for that. There were some things like having multiple wives that happened with people, but there's also explanations that you can find for them. So we can't just take and believe whatever we want willy nilly just based on one piece of evidence. We actually have to look for how the truth furnishes the answer of how to comprehend everything that's in it. And when you when you seek it, you you can find those things, especially with the advent of the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is, and King Shalomo said, Baruch be you of Yahuwah, and Baruch be your discretion. For you were wise and acted, and you were successful. And King Shalomo spoke to the, in, she was wise because she knew the word. She knew the promises to Dawid. She knew the intent or the law behind keeping your seed pure and not, not, having your daughters lie with the uncircumcised. So she was prudent. She showed discretion. She prayed because she couldn't do it herself and then was successful. When we know the promises or the, the, the eternal established reality that is founded in his word, and we pray asking for those very things, we too can be successful because we're only asking for him to establish what he said that he would. Right? And that's why it says, when you ask anything according to his desire, he hears you. And King Shalomo spoke to the ears of all his servants, saying, Has anyone found such a charming woman and a heroine, or a chayil ashit, right? A capable woman, if you will. And he said, Elohim be favorable unto you, my daughter. And from this day on, you shall not be called my sister but my daughter, for you are, or you were extremely wise. And King Shalomo gave his daughter Tamar to the son of Abinadab to be his wife. And she found favor in the eyes of her husband, and he loved her very much. He was an officer over all the region of Dor, and he's the officer that's mentioned in the Chronicles as over that region and king shalomo called tamar his daughter tefath tefath right for stactite the first of the incense and this was her name all the days of her life meaning the first of the incense that's mentioned that you offer and the offerings of a sweet smelling fragrance right so uh, a fitting end for his sister and something that we don't see in the common scriptures at all, but you do see the evidence of it because you can look and find that this man is really over that place. So interesting connections that we can all take and of willing, you all will see more profit in these and how they connect with his word as time goes on. So without further ado, Yahoo be with you all and you have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat and week ahead and we'll see you next time.